Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about protective filters and uh, whether or not you should use one all the time um, or maybe some of the time. This is kind of a contentious issue with photographers. You've got your, I want a protective filter in front of my lens all the time and you've got the other camp saying no, never. And today we're going to look at the reasons of why you might want to do that one way with some exceptions or the other way with some exceptions. A little bit of history. Back in film days, the primary reason for using a filter, like an ultraviolet filter, on the front of your lens was because color film was sensitive to ultraviolet light. And uh, especially the higher in altitude you go because you know, the sun gives off ultraviolet light, a lot of ultraviolet light, why we get burned, um, but the higher you go, the less atmosphere there is to scatter that uh, ultraviolet light. And I remember when I was a kid, we went on vacation, I think it was probably out west to higher ele elevations, and my father had a pretty decent SLR and took some photos. He got some really weird lighting things going on. And we got back home. Uh, at the time, my older brother was actually pretty into photography, and he looked at me and he goes, oh, you need to put an ultraviolet filter on the lens. So that's actually how the whole uh, having a filter in front of your lens all the time idea came from, because it sort of made sense back then. With the advent of digital photography, though, the actual sensor stack uh, with the glass in front of the filter uh, there's ultraviolet filtration there, there's infrared filtration there. So uh, that's why people who want to do astrophotography will pay to have that removed. Or it used to be, interestingly, Canon sold a variation of the 20D, this is way back, kind of the dawn of digital SLRs. Um, it was an 8, eight megapixel camera, but they sold um, a version called the 20 DA, I believe, for astrophotography uh, with no filtration. So really what kind of happened is getting into the digital uh, realm, the idea was you should have a filter in front of your lens to actually protect it, uh, not because you need protection from ultraviolet, but you want to have protection from the elements or protection from impact damage. I have my doubts about that second one. So is having a filter in front of your, on the front of your camera lens, uh, is that protective? Uh, well, yes and no. Um, I'm pretty sure that Canon's weather sealed lenses are only completely weather sealed if you have a filter on them. Um, that may have changed, but it, I'm pretty sure it used to be that way. I think people think that having a filter in front of the lens has some benefit to protecting against impact damage. And I have serious doubts about that. I think that if you bang the front of your lens enough to damage the filter, you're going to have to have that lens checked out uh, because you don't know what kind of internal damage you've done to it, especially with image stabilization mechanisms inside the lens. So you can always have damage done to a lens where the outside looks pretty, I mean, looks pristine. The other problem is if you bang the front of your lens hard enough and you dent the filter threads, while the filter is on it, you may not be able to get the filter off. And if that glass is shattered on the front of the filter, you're going to have to send it in for maintenance anyway because you're going to have to have somebody get that filter off. They're probably going to have to replace um, the front part of the barrel of the lens. The argument against using a filter all the time is it's not just that. It's that Anytime you put something at the front of your lens, you're, you're actually adding another glass air, actually another two glass air interfaces for things like flare and ghosting to appear. Back when I started, uh, kind of started getting back into photography in the 90s, I bought a Canon A2E and the kit 28 to 105 uh, zoom lens. Actually, it was a display model, so I got a really good deal on it. And I'm pretty sure at the time I bought this B plus W UV filter, UV haze filter, 58 millimeter thread. It's the 010 model. It's a really good filter. However, it was not multi-coated. So filters have evolved over the years. 
And it used to be that you got a filter. This has shot app optical glass, so it's good optical glass, but it's not multi-coated. Today, you get filters like this Hoya NXT 58 millimeter uh, ultraviolet filter. Um, and this is multi-coated. In fact, you can tell the difference by looking at light reflected in it. You know, so you can do, oh, there we go. So that's my um, aperture key light. And this is the B plus W filter. And you see that reflection there. Now, if I take this Hoya and I do the same thing here, you can see there's a bit of a difference. Um, it's not quite as reflective. Actually, we can do these both together. Let's see if I let's see if I can do this. Got it. Okay, you didn't see how long that took. Um, so filters are better now. Uh, you can also get if if you don't want to spend quite as much money. Um, on a good filter, you can also get uh, this is this is actually a ProMaster, which is interesting. This brand that I think the old Wolf camera sold, but you can get this. I bought this actually here in Chicago at a bricks and mortar uh, store, Dodd Camera, and um, this one is just a just protective glass. This is not um, a UV filter because uh, obviously not necessary. And it is shot optical glass. This is a higher end ProMaster filter. And while we're on that subject, the really, really important thing to remember is if you're going to spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on a lens, don't put a cheap piece of glass in front of it. Don't put a $5 filter on a hundreds of dollar lens because uh, you're asking for issues. Now, um, Again, you don't need to spend a ton of money. This filter, the um, B plus W, has been updated. It is multi-coated. It has a brass ring, which means it won't tend to get jammed on the front of your lens. Um, however, it's over $70, whereas this Hoya NXT, aluminum ring, so you don't want to crank this onto a lens very tightly because you'll have a, you know, you'll have a heck of a time getting it off. Um, but this was a little over 30 58 millimeters. And of course, one of the things I really like about Micro Four Thirds is the largest filter I need is a 67 millimeter filter. Because back when I shot Canon, lots of their pro lenses take a 77 millimeter filter. And then we're talking, especially with polarizers, quite a bit more money. So it used to be with um, uncoated filters, these, these older filters, that you would get increased flare and increased ghosting if you had these on the lens and you had any kind of light source coming in either from the side or directly into the, le into the lens. But recently what I did was I went out and I had um, my uh, G9 and my Lumix 12-35 to f2.8, which is a really pretty good lens. Um, and I've generally been in the don't use a filter unless you absolutely have to camp. And so what I did was I was out not far from here on a forest reserve and I took the opportunity to take a picture of the sun um, with that uh, G9 12-35 combo without a filter and then with, a fil with this Hoya NXT multicolored filter. And if you look at these images, you can see that um, there is more, a little bit more flare in the filtered one, but it's really hard to tell the difference. So if you get a good multi-coated filter, um, you may well be able to keep it on the front of your lens all the time. I would still really be aware that sometimes you're going to get increased flare, especially from a light source. Actually, after dark from a light source, um, you may see a ghost image of that light source diagonally across the frame. Uh, with a filter on. You might see it with the lens anyway. And if you're using an iPhone, you're definitely going to see it because they just do that. Within a week later, I was taking a hike again, but this time with my G95 and the uh, 12 to 60 millimeter lens, which is still pretty decent performing lens when it comes to flare. I had this B plus W non-coated filter and I was in a situation where I thought, hmm, let me check the, the B plus W with the 12 to 60. And so here you can see this is without the uh, filter, and then when I pop the filter on, holy cow, 
Flare City, lots of ghosting. I mean, difference is absolutely clear. So again, use multicolored filters. This old filter, I think, is going to see use on actually my 35 to 100, um, mainly because the hood is so deep that the chances for flare are much less, but it's something I'm going to need to be aware of. Now, if you are in the no filter ever camp, there's times that I think that you're going to want to have one in your bag because I think we can all think of times when that would be the case. You're at the shore, a beach. Um, you know, if you are at an ocean beach, uh, that salt spray, uh, which ends up being a mist and it doesn't completely become water vapor, there's dissolved salt in that water. And when you come away from the beach, you're going to see salt on the front of your lens. Even a beach on one of our Great Lakes, Lake Michigan here, um, that water is fresh water, but it still has some dissolved stuff in it. So you're getting that same spray. And although it's not going to be as bad, you're still going to get some precipitated solids on the front of your lens. Um, and plus, when you're in that situation, you're probably going to be cleaning your lens a lot. So it's probably better to be cleaning the filter a lot than the front element of the lens a lot. The other thing about beaches, blowing sand. Um, here, when we get a big storm here in Chicago, there's a lot of blowing sand on the beaches. So that whole argument of using a filter all the time versus not there's merits to both sides. You know, there's times when if you're an all filter all the time person, you may see something and just be aware that there's still a possibility of some flare from, from a filter. Um, and if you're no filter ever, have them in your bag because uh, you don't want to be in a situation. I mean, here, waterfalls, that's another one. All that mist. I mean, water. It's, it's very rare to have water so pure that uh, the spray isn't going to have something dissolved in it. So um, have them in your bag for those times when you need to protect your lens. And that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If this was useful to you, please hit that like button. It's a big help to me. I'm Todd Banner, and I will see you next time.